Is the weather dead? Severe weather is dead. Hurricane season appears dead. Summer seems dead, at least for many of us. Is the weather really dead? Or is it just mostly dead? We're going to find out this morning right here on Cold Rain's Weather World, and we're going to see if there's anything that can bring it back to life. Welcome into the channel, folks. Jason here with you. have been tracking weather for over four decades, and I can honestly say this is one of the weirdest August I have ever seen. Everything is just flatlined across the board. It's been remarkably cool for many of us, and it's going to stay that way, it looks like. Look at this. Severe weather. Nothing going on. Flatlined just nothing happening on the severe weather front at all. What about the tropics? Well, the only thing going on on this map is little tropical storm Fernand headed stage right, exiting stage right, weakening as it does, so nothing else going on out here. There it goes, off to the east at 12 miles per hour, max sustained winds 45, going to dissipate and find its demise here in the North Atlantic, just like Aaron did. What about elsewhere in the tropics? Well, we've got a robust looking way coming off the coast of Africa, but don't let looks deceive you folks. Some of the ensemble members have something going on with this in several days, but largely the Atlantic is unfavorable. We've got wind shear, we've got dry air, a general sinking motion across the basin. You want rising motion if you're expecting tropical development. That's what the background state would be that would support it. We're not seeing that in the next week or maybe two. Got a little wave here in the central Atlantic and a little paltry looking a little thing, part of a wave that's approaching the islands, but that's about it. Got a big cold front that is pushed off the coast. Sometimes you get homegrown activity when you have these stalled boundaries, so we'll watch it. We're going to watch everything out here, but I'm not seeing any signs of anything going on. If something does develop, it's going to zoom off to the north and east and be out of everyone's hair, folks. Here's your satellite image. Check this out. You can see the long wave pattern really, really well. Look at this. Big trough in the east, ridge out west. Showers and clouds and thunderstorms all along this boundary from Washington State down here into Oklahoma. And we've seen several rounds of heavy rain here in Oklahoma and Kansas over the last couple of days. These clouds are producing rain up here in the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West and the Northern Rockies as well. Some cloud cover up here in New England and across Florida where that frontal boundary is living. And check this out. Another surge of cooler air with another boundary coming out of Canada dropping south in this fashion will renew fall feelings, have those fall vibes coming down again this weekend. And here is Tropical Storm Juliet just off your screen. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to shift this up a little bit so you can see it. There she is, Tropical Storm Juliet. Get the lines off. She is going out to sea, but uh, that's what's going on. We've seen moisture just pumped in here into the west. We're going to continue to see that. Here are your alerts. Flood watches up in the you know, inner, not really inner mountain. We've got Nevada here and some of the northern Rockies, Bitterroots, places like that. Could see several inches of rain. We need it up here, but we don't need it in a hurry. So hopefully we can avoid that and just see some scattered showers and thunderstorms. They're going to produce heavy rainfall. Uh, there's a lot of moisture out here. So watch out for flooding, uh, occasionally some street flooding and things like that. But uh, hopefully you guys get some much needed rain and some red flag warnings. It's been very hot, dry, don't burn. It's going to be continually hot in the northwest over the next few days as well. So watch out for that. If we take a look here, we can see some uh, areas for uh, excessive rainfall, slight risk up here around Idaho, and then also from Denver back in here into northern and um, maybe um, northern Arkansas here. And we'll see that today. And then tomorrow, the threat shifts mainly over here, eastern Colorado, but back in toward centering around Arkansas. We're going to see another batch of heavy rain move through, bring a couple, three inches here, probably see some flash flood watch. Uh, watches hoisted here over the course of the next 24 hours or so. That's where your big weather is. Look at this from BAM Weather posted on X this morning. These are all the cities that tied or broke their record low temperatures, 155 of them to be exact. And in fact, Atlanta got down to 55, which broke its all time record low for the month of August. Incredible air mass, unusual times. And we've got a lot of weather to look at this morning. We're gonna take a look at your Labor Day weekend forecast. We're going to wrap the show up with the geological update. We've got a new volcano to monitor out in our Pacific ring of fire, but we're going to do all of that in just a minute. Right now, we've got your weather IQ question. I'm going to see how your IQ is holding up here, folks, before we get into the weekend forecast. 
All right, I got what I hope is an easy question for you today on this hump day. We don't want to get too difficult and challenging, you know, get you through the rest of the week with some confidence. So here we go. What is the temperature at which air becomes fully saturated with water vapor? Humidity limit, dew point, condensation of value, wet bulb temperature. And maybe it's not so easy. I don't know. We're going to see if you know it. If you do know it, type it in the comment section. If you don't know it, wait till the end of the show and I'll let you know exactly what it is. But right now we're going to take a look at that Labor Day forecast and see what the pattern looks like as we head through the rest of the week into your holiday weekend. What is this? Well, this is called a haboob. No, it's not part of your anatomy. Let's keep it PG-13 here on Cold Rain's Weather Roll, folks. This is a dust storm, and it happened in Phoenix the other day. I was going to show you yesterday, but I uh, just didn't have enough time to put it together. But there it is, big wall of dust coming in to inundate the city. Look at this. Now, this is Tempe, Arizona. You see this right here? This is a big dust storm hitting where Arizona State plays football. Turns day to night just like that. High winds. Pelting dust will sandblast you to death, folks. I would not want to be caught in that. So hopefully there won't be any more dust storms as we go out in time. But look what happens uh, now as we take a look here at the upper air pattern. As we go on out to take a look at your weekend forecast, we're going to look upstairs and check out our height anomaly map to understand what the pattern is so we can understand what the weather is going to be. We need to know that. Look at this. This is really, really interesting. you got a big ridge out here in Western Canada. That is called a negative EPO. That's going to matter when it comes winter time. Here's a big trough response in the east. When you get a big ridge out west, you get a big trough in the east, vice versa. And uh, ridges bring fair weather usually in mild conditions. And troughs bring cooler weather, blue colors, cooler, and sometimes unsettled conditions depending on the size of the trough, how deep it is. But look at this. We go on out over the course of the week. Look what happens. That trough out east just stays in place as this ridge continues to stay in place out west and even build toward eastern Canada. As we go on out toward the weekend, this is Sunday and Monday of next week, we get this secondary ridge in eastern Canada. That is a block, folks. And what that does is it traps things underneath it. Look what it trapped underneath it, a trough. So is it going to warm up with a trough in place? No, it's not. It's going to be cooler than normal for much of the nation's midsection and into the east with that big blocking ridge up there. What else it does is it traps a high pressure at the surface here, and you get clockwise winds around that flowing down the apse. And what is that called? That's called a wedge, folks. We're going to have another August wedge probably come next week. And as that happens, we get another renewal of this ridge out in the west, and it just gets bigger and bigger. It links up with ridging along the west coast this time. It pokes way up into Alaska, and you get a big trough response. Look at this. Big ridge out here, big trough here. It's just reloading everything Canada's got in terms of cooler conditions, just coming straight into the central and eastern, eventually eastern portion of the country. Probably going to be a little cooler than normal relative to the whole pattern. Um, the coolest anomalies probably be in the central portion of the country this time, but still, this is just pulling air down out of Canada. It's just amazing, folks, and it stays in place for 10, maybe as much as 14 days before things maybe dissipate. We'll see and if, if things turn around, but man, that is something else. Look at this now. This is our dew point, hint, hint, our dew point map. I've seen a lot of uh, greens over the east this summer. Now we're seeing some greens out west where it was brown and browns in the east. Look at that brown. What can brown do for you? Well, brown can cool you off and help you feel cooler as the temperature comes down and the dry air penetrates in. It's going to feel good, not so muggy, and it's going to feel nice outside. If you go out and exercise, you're going to sweat much more efficiently and cool off quicker. And look at this, another blast. You can see that arc along coming into the Great Lakes. Another blast coming out of Canada into the southeast kind of mid-south uh, upper southeast certainly in the midwest great lakes and over into new england uh, it will dissipate some of that air and then you can kind of see the wedge signature take place later on in the period as we get on out into tuesday of next week so that's what's going on folks over the course of the weekend just more dry air coming in another uh, reinforcing shot in terms of our rainfall over the next several days this is the rainfall expected today the higher amounts are in reds so you get to the, the scale is kind of an inch is where you get to yellow, a half an inch is blue, less than a half an inch is the green, and then once you get in here into the oranges and reds, you're picking up two to three inches potentially. So watch the rainfall footprint from Washington here into Arkansas today, and then of course over Florida and a little bit up here in New England. Now tomorrow, 
bigger threat uh, shifts into the center portion of the country down near Arkansas and uh, down into Dixie and potentially swinging into the southeast as well. Florida, plenty of rain and you got some showers with that secondary front coming out of Canada and still got some rain up here in the northwest uh, as well in the central plains. That moves east as we get on into Friday and then that frontal boundary sags a little bit farther south. Rain's focused over the deep south on Friday. Saturday, unfortunately, if you've got beach plans, look at this from the southeast coast of North Carolina all the way down through Florida and around to the Gulf Coast. We're going to see uh, potential for rain this weekend in the Central Plains as well, hanging around uh, Saturday into Sunday. Same scenario, really, it doesn't change all that much. The Northeast and, of course, the West Coast beaches look pretty good, except up here in Maine. And I'm not sure there's a lot of beach up there. It's a pretty beautiful coastline, though. But uh, Southeast beaches, Gulf Coast could see rainfall on uh, Sunday and then, of course, into Monday. The same pattern holds. So, unfortunately, if you're going down to the beach, you may have a tough go of it over the uh, Labor Day weekend, folks. Here's the rainfall potential over the next seven days, and you can see where the footprint is from Idaho and uh, Wyoming all the way down through Kansas into uh, the lower Mississippi Valley through Dixie Alley into Florida, where you guys need the rain down there. Also, New Mexico and Texas looking to pick up some beneficial rains up here in the Northeast as well. That bulk of that's going to come on the front end, uh, but that's what's going on there. Temperature wise, folks, we're not going to belabor this because the maps look about the same every day. We're going to see uh, 70s, 60s, and 70s today for highs, and then 80s and 90s across the south, a little bit more humid, a little bit warmer in the desert southwest, and then warm up in the Pacific Northwest, and some you know, mild air up here in the uh, plains as well. Tomorrow, things uh, generally remain about the same, just 80s scattered in with the 70s across the north, warming up a little bit in Texas, keeping it warm in the Pacific Northwest and the interior sections, but down here we've got a secondary shot coming in. You can see those 60s coming in as we get look at Friday's temperatures, and then as we get on into Saturday, Saturday, much of the nation with 70s, even 60s in the northeast for highs, and then back here in the deep south and across the uh, southern tier, we're looking at highs uh, in the 90s and the 100s, and even in the interior northwest. We'll keep that around for Saturday. Sunday, much the same scenario, and then on Monday, again, warming back up here in the northern plains and maybe some warmth getting back up into the Mississippi Valley as the sun does its number on uh, the temperatures. Uh, but there, there you have it, folks. Look at this. Eight to 14 days. This is September 3rd through the night so getting us well into September now as we approach the peak of hurricane season below normal signal big time in the central portion of the country above in the west above down here in Florida Alaska and Hawaii both above and then precipitation much of the nation at or above normal particularly down here in Texas this is again the 8 to 14 day period so a lot of rain is going to be, have fallen before then and uh, mixed here in Alaska and there you have it in Hawaii folks and so that's what's going on uh, over the course of the next uh, couple of days to your weekend to maybe two weeks out so I hope that's helpful to you now we're going to wrap things up with our geological and space weather update coming at you right now all right, nothing going on on the space weather front right now. KP is flat, chronograph not looking too shabby, nothing happening here. There's the sun. Well, there's some sunspots turning toward us now that are a little bit concerning. There they are. There's the disk. A lot of sunspot activity on here. The green stuff you don't really need to worry about too much. 4197, though. That one looks kind of gnarly. Look at that. Big growing sunspots gaining in complexity too. You got negatives and then you got positives and negatives and starting to see some uh, interaction with these. And once you do, you start to maybe mix those charges up and uh, you could get sunspot or solar flares rather and potentially CMEs if the solar flare is big enough. And so we've seen some of those shoot out on the backside of the sun, probably from this area here. It'll be facing us over the next few days, folks. So we're going to keep our eyes on it. Earthquakes, we had a 5.3 in Taiwan 27 minutes ago, as you can see here crawling across the top. Had one earlier, a 5.4 over in Russia, way over there. Nothing going on here in the States, but we do have a new volcano to look at here in the Aleutians, uh, Shishaldin. There it is. It's on an advisory level, and there's the, the actual mountain itself. Got a little smoke coming out the top, but uh, we've seen... Uh, geologic or just tectonic activity sort of tick up maybe some lava flowing underneath the surface so it's now on an advisory level there Sitkin and Kilauea continuing to uh, erupt sporadically and there's your new um, or your moon erupting up to a 17.7 percent waxing crescent phase going up to full corn moon status on September the 7th so not too far from now and there's your fall countdown not even sure why we need to show this anymore since fall's already here 26 days 4 hours 37 minutes and 32, no, 31 seconds until calendar fall, meteorological fall is much, much closer. That brings us all the way back around here, folks, 
to the answer to today's weather IQ question. And here is the question. What is the temperature at which the air becomes fully saturated with water vapor? And out of all of these answers, the correct one is B, 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 dew point. Did you get that right, folks? Whenever you have an air mass and you're not adding moisture to it, you're just cooling it. Remember, cool air holds less moisture than warm air. It's like a sponge. So when you cool it, it's kind of like squeezing that sponge. And eventually you get to the point where you start to squeeze water out. Well, that's the dew point. You cool the air down to the point where the air is fully saturated and water gets squeezed out. It actually comes out of the air and it land and you know it just it forms dew on the plants and surfaces if it's warm if it's cool if it's cooler than freezing it will form frost of course and that's what happens folks some of these other ones like humidity limit and condensation value i just made those up we'll talk more about the wet bulb temperature that's going to be important come winter time but that is the iq question for the day one more thing you need to know on august 27th 1896 the anglo-zanzibar war both began and ended and lasted um, on the same day and lasted 38 to 45 minutes, making it the shortest war ever recorded. Wow, that's pretty short. I thought that was an interesting fact. I wanted to share it with you folks. Well, we'll see if summer returns. I think it might at the end of September. Hurricane season probably going to pick back up too at some point when we get that rising air back into the tropical basin. But uh, we'll see. Severe weather may be on hiatus for a while in terms of a widespread basis. So I'll keep you posted here. I'll be back tomorrow with another video in any event. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. As always, cold rain reminding you. The weather runs 24-7, but I got you covered right here, right now on Cold Rain's Weather World 4814. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.